Okay, having a fun day out with the boys. We came to Ball State for um, go through the Museum of Art. Oh, what's he got? And there's a squirrel up there chattering up a storm. Listen to it. recognize where we're going. I wonder why it's roped off. Fine. Well, I'm glad at least when Annie and Brett came over, they didn't have to have it all roped off. Stand back, Karen. Way back. Nope, when we came with Annie and Brent. <coughs> Are you a little cold there, Toby? Kind of forgot the other half of your pants today. Okay, Theron, since you feel the need to do your tap dance, why don't you do it on the way down to the art museum? Go. What step can you do across there? <laughs> okay, do one. There you go. We need to get you a second pair of tap shoes just so you can wear one that'll be roughed up on pavement. You're trying. There's no sound. It's funny when there's no sound, isn't it? Okay, <coughs> okay we're going to go over to the Museum of Art, and then in a little bit, we're going to go over to the planetarium to learn about moons. This letter is terrible. Go ahead. We call the skip. sideways skip. A sideways skip? It's like tap dancing. It's like Oh boy. What time is it? 3.39. Oh, okay. Okay, wait. Ball State Museum. There's the hours. Saturday and Sunday, 1.30 to 4.30. Hello, I'm fine. How okay, well that was nice. You don't have to do a check-in anymore. Free to browse around. And the sky looks nice. Hands back. Piano. No, you can't sit there unless you're playing the piano. Abraham Lincoln. to the right first. There and put your hands in your pockets if you have a hard time keeping your hands down. Well that's cool, isn't it? 
Greek and Roman coins. And that's interactive. Whoa. Whoa. What did it say? Sarcophagus fragment. Wow, that's cool. Four hundred and fifty to five hundred fifty CE. Oh, if you stand way back, Theron, do you stand further back and it's two tigers and a bird. Got it? Now that I'm back further I see it. Oh my goodness. What are these? Yeah. They have lots of cool. Whoa. Oh, what's this? Read the cards and you'll learn a lot. Japanese, you said Chinese. That's a Japanese suit of armor. At Edo period, 1600 to 1868 CE. Lacquered steel and silk cord. Not enjoying an art tour, Toby? Huh? What would you rather be doing? Sleep. Sleeping? I think, I, I think I know how people find, find this stuff in Bunga here. How? Archaeologists. Yep, that's a good start. Which is your favorite piece in this room, Theron? What's your favorite piece? The side between that or the Out of anything. Oh, Pick okay. one. One that you think is the Sam most cool. Did you notice that helmet reminds you of Darth Vader? Yes. I, yes. I wonder if that's where they got the design from. Oh, what? No. What? What, Toby? No. What? You pick, Theron, let's go to the right first, Toby. We're going to... Theron, no running, dancing, or tapping. Hands down, people are doing art class and they're trying to work on their art projects. Have a seat, Toby. Okay, so what art do you want to look for today? You want to look for a cat picture? Okay, up the stairs to the right. And there's a... Out in the hallway, is that painting out there, Toby? What's that, Baron? Smoke? Uh, a, a, yeah, a broken, this is a broken down ship. A broken down ship. Star Wars ship. Star Wars ship. Okay. Okay, Krabby Pants, Toby just shared that in his sixth grade art class, they're doing watercolors right now. So this is the technique of dry brush and on the figure. Lifting is this line right in there. 
grade wash. They're showing like right along the mountain line. Wet on wet clouds. Wash is along scraping on the bottom. She said this is um, a portrait done in the Appalachian Mountains. And there are some others that people do. Right there. And what is it, Baron? It's a. I'm meeting it. The modern, the modern day crash of Star Wars ship. Okay. The modern. This was a nice free activity, wasn't it? Yeah. Krabby Patty is going to do one. Steady hand. Mom, you know what this is. No, this, this, this right here. Do you need more help because it's a big bottle? Darren's mine. He's mixing acrylics and watercolors, but it's all watercolor. I can do Okay. What are you going to create? Nothing. White. This is where you is can... Is that white? Yes. It's going to start getting sloppy there. You were neat. <coughs> you, is that it? Wait a second. Come here. Why does it... Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Watercolor. Interesting. Let's walk to the right. Okay. <laughs> Look, do these inspire you, Toby, for school? Look at that one back there. I've seen plenty. Huh? I've seen plenty. Oh, yeah. These are watercolors from our our collection. And Brian Gordy, who is a watercolorist in Nancy, uh -huh. he picked he picked these from our collection to make an exhibit. See, that's the uh, Edward Hopper. That's probably one of the most valuable mm -hmm. and most most famous ones besides the Winslow Home. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's interesting how how that that fellow. Yes, he, he lived in Greenwich Village in New York, painted New York. Uh-huh. So. View, is that it? Wait a second, come here. Why does it, Star Wars, may the force be with you? Watercolor. Interesting. Let's walk to the right. Okay. Do these inspire you, Toby, for school? Look at that one back there. I've seen plenty. Huh? I've seen plenty. Oh, oh yeah? These are watercolors from our, our collection. And Brian Gordy, who is a watercolorist in Muncie, uh -huh. he, picked, he picked these from our collection to make an exhibit. And see, that's the uh, Edward Hopper. That's probably one of the most valuable mm -hmm. and most most famous one besides the Winslow Home. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's interesting how, how that that fellow, those two of his, he he lived in Greenwich Village in New York, painted New York. Uh huh. So. Okay, oh. we're going to the Charles W. Brown Planetarium at Ball State. And what are we going to learn about Theron? The, every single planet. Wait, what? All the planets' moons and about them. Yeah. Well, it it oh. says it's about moons. We're going to learn about <laughs> moons. <laughs> Come on, Toby. He's being a pokey pants today. Toby was not excited about this, but Theron is super excited. I'm excited. Toby's getting excited. <laughs> I've been here 
us several times. Yeah, you haven't seen this program. It's a new program. Are you like being stealth? Okay, so we're wandering around. I remember exhibits like this when I was here at college. It says the white-tailed deer is the only big game animal in Indiana, eradicated from the state by 1900. The white tail was reestablished in 1934. Since then, there has been a rapid increase. With no natural predators present, the deer can quickly overpopulate, resulting in damage to crops, orchards, and gardens. The deer in turn suffer from starvation, disease, and highway fatalities. Sensible hunting seasons are established to regulate population. The fawns in this exhibit were found abandoned. The doe was killed on the highway. This last sentence tells you what happened. Come over here and read it. Many apples. <coughs> Represents an Indiana hardwood forest. Early May. Dogwood, mayapple, trout lily, nodding trillium. Taxidermy was done by Jeff Yelton. Okay, we're continuing down the second. This is the second floor. It's called a food classroom. And I'm just talking about that. Oh, we're almost really? End, almost ending. Wow, learning about food webs right, and right here. Wait, that bird is a great bear hand, Aaron. Okay. Yes. It has what's, that, that what's that the remnant of up there? No. Um, a nest. Hornet's nest. Did you see the far corner? No, it has. It's called the horn the muskrat, a fox, raccoon, snake, a leopard frog. Muskrat. A blue I see a snake. A great blue hand. Where's the muskrat? I don't see it. I'm like Theron. I don't that's see the, the muskrat. That's, that's the a, muskrat. No, that's a raccoon. No. That's it's almost an albino or it's very faded by the light. Well, what else? Food webs. No, a, Predator a, and prey have gathered around fault. an that's Indiana pond. The muskrat searches for aquatic plants. Well, they replaced it with a raccoon. <coughs> um, the fox and owl which are carnivores, look for birds and rodents. The raccoon has spotted its favorite food, the scavenger crayfish. Do you see the crayfish? I see a frog on the rock back there. You see a crawdad? That's what you call a crayfish. They do like those. The scavenger crayfish. The northern water snake down here seek small frogs and fish while a wary leopard frog is watching for insects. That must be a leopard frog. Uh, an immature blue, great blue heron has just arrived on the scene with a small fish for its evening meal. Each animal is seeking food and water requirements and is cautiously aware of the presence of the others, so if necessary, it can make a quick retreat into the protection of the forest. I can't believe this is all still here. Is there any others? My goodness, it's um, almost 30 years ago. Okay, let's continue on down. Here you go. Whoa, look at all those. The card on the left inside the case will tell you. Red tail hawk. Okay, Darren, scoot back and let Toby point. Red tail hawk. Go across the top, Toby. Hawk, rough legged hawk. Red shoulder oh hawk. Gosh. Duck hawk. Oh my sparrow gosh. bird. Sparrow hawk. Perry chicken. Ring neck pheasant. No, that's a pr the two prairie chickens. And then. Oh, and then the red. Red neck. Ring neck. Ring neck. 
Bob White coils and the rough grill. So uh, Bob White. This thing over here too. Alright. I told you it was interesting, didn't I? Yeah. And free. Great blue heron. Gonna put me. Look at their feet. There's the little guy down there. And he's guy. What's least better? Okay, Darren, are you excited now? Yes! We did a little demonstration <laughs> over there <laughs> to learn with mar using marbles and steel balls how planets Me. are shaped and move. And the sun. Let's talk nice. Yes. Okay. When we came, there was no one. And look at this. 20 minutes before the program. That'll be a good time though, won't it? Uh huh. Have you been talking about the moon at school? Because so far we've done two things today that come to find out you're studying in school right now. Hands to yourself. They have a program in December to learn about the Star of Bethlehem. Um, it'll change up there and mention the other program. Okay, Theron, our turn. Okay, Toby, are you excited now? Getting excited? Ooh, no, you haven't. Are you excited, Theron? Yeah, I'm just watching this. What's it telling you? You're stalking me. <laughs> Down at the planetarium. Toby, what was your favorite part? Just watching. Amazing. Totally 100% free. One of the best planetarium shows and the most information I've gotten to see about the moon. Theron, what do you think? What was your favorite part? Three and I think things. What? What? Say it plainly so that people know. Interesting is. <coughs> we got to saw Saturn's moon Titan that we looked like it had it was another world. Number two was um was um that, that guy showing what time what time would be like um when it when it changed and everything. Like in like in six months, how the stars mm -hmm. alignment changed. That and um number three um, was, um, was, I know what is hard. Toby, any last thoughts? Theron? Well, it was seeing. They had good behavior in there. And everything else was the best. Yeah. Definitely one of the best programs, the, and the boys were mesmerized the whole time. And um, come 30 minutes before, and they start doing the seating, and then you can see a bunch of NASA and NOVA clips and information, and the boys really enjoyed that. So 30 minutes before the, the time. Star of Bethlehem is the one next month, and they're both super excited to learn about that. Okay, say goodnight. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, sleep tight, don't let bed bugs bite. <laughs>